What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today we found ourselves fishing Lake Worth off the Hot Tamale for the first time. Devin's first time fishing the lake. I have fished it once. I'll link that video down below actually. It was in a kayak tournament and uh, I actually cashed a paycheck. And there was like 50 plus other kayak anglers out here that day. There's fighter jets flying over the lake today. It's pretty cool. And you got the firefighters working on some drills over here anyways. We're uh, probably at the main boat ramp. I think there's two major boat ramps here. I could even be wrong there, but regardless, I want to hit some new stuff as opposed to what I fished on my first visit. So we've got uh, the hot tamale, which can travel a little bit faster than the trolling motor on that kayak. And I think we'll be able to cover a lot of ground today. We're starting early. We're going to do some flipping. We might do some frogging towards the evening. We're going to probably do some cranking and we're going to see what else they might eat today. Check him out, man. He's right above the lake. Wow. Let's go ahead and get to fishing. I can't tell. I'm not sure. I don't think so at this point. Fudge. <clears throat> Gosh dang it. Broke it off. It was like a boom and then I just set it and it probably came right off. You gotta set the hook fast because they'll feel the weight. Probably a couple pounds at least is what you're gonna catch in here. If you catch a small one in here, it's gonna be unusual. Try to set it to the side if you can because setting it up you could hit your forehead. I'm rigging up a different hook this time. Now I'm going with the Guggen Squad uh, Bandito flipping hook. This is a 4 aught right here, okay? And we've been using the VMC. These are only like two or threes, but they work great for the uh, Nuke Punch Bandito bug. You can grab a larger size if you want. I've had a great hook up ratio with them. What ends up happening on these hooks, and the Guggen one might do something funky with this little Fluoro um, Bait Keeper too. I don't know yet, but we're about to test it out, is that the plastic it just cracks and it breaks and so it won't hold your plastic up there if you get in a you know, fair amount of use of, out of it in one day. And so maybe you've had the same experience, but these VMC hooks, I noticed they break. I'm sure these ones, you know, this is, this is a thick cover tactic. So you're gonna be tearing up your gear, that's for sure. So maybe something will happen with these Guggen hooks as well, but I haven't fished these much, these uh, flipping hooks by them yet. So uh, I always leave extra tag end on my Snell knot. You're really not tying anything but a Snell knot when you're doing a lot of the flipping, okay? Cause what's gonna happen is that heavier weight, as soon as you get a bite, it actually helps you get the hook set by pushing that hook barb up. There we go. Come on. Yes. By pushing the point of the hook up. You see that? So whenever you're tying your snell knot, you need to make sure you face away from the uh, the barb there. Otherwise, if you do it, if you rig it backwards, essentially it's going to make the hook go like this. Anytime you get a bite, it's going to pop it up backwards. So that would be less of a hookup ratio. Anyways, you can see when that weight pushes down, pushes that hook right up in there and helps you get that hookup ratio. Double pegged, heavy weight. Uh, if it was even thicker and we really needed to kind of punch through some stuff, I'd go, you know, one ounce or even heavier, whatever it requires to get through the stuff. You want to go as light as possible to get to the bottom, but as heavy as needed to get through the cover. So we're just doing a half ounce because we're just kind of fishing these reed edges. Sometimes we're kind of casting back into a second layer of them though, and you might need a thicker weight to get through the stuff, and half ounce seems to be doing it today. And then we're going with what helped me cash a paycheck in that tournament last time. We're just throwing the nuke punch, and we're going green pumpkin purple. I mean, you really can't go wrong. Unlike a Texas rig, I just push this hook up into the bait, but I don't penetrate all the way through, okay? With your flipping setups, you keep that hook buried in the plastic because you're gonna be ripping it through the thick stuff, so. If we don't find too much more here, we're headed straight to uh, Docks, Rocks, and more goodies. The top water plopper. They're just roaming up the bank, hunting stuff down. Come on. Oh, got him. Well, I, we fed the curiosity and we ended up catching one on the old top water and it was not largemouth, which we kind of figured. It seemed like a school of white bass maybe was just swimming through there. Anyways. We had like a drop shot on there though, so I was like, this is heavier, should work a little bit. Yeah, Side, so there's the first fish. I'm just okay. Woo, good one. There we go, first fish on the chatterbait off the rock over here. We made a switch from bluebird skies today. There is a little breeze, which is nice. All those bait fish, they're probably hanging out in the shade right now, just chilling. And then right on the edge of the shade is where those bass are probably cruising around up shallow, ambushing prey if they're on the move. Okay. So that's exactly what that chatterbait represents is just a little shad. And I got a bandito bug as the trailer. If they're on this rock and we can put a pattern together, catch more than just one or two, then we'll probably just spend the rest of the evening fishing rock. And we're just throwing this on a seven foot 
medium heavy fast action rod okay fantastic for just about everything in your tackle box we got a braid to a floral carbon leader and that's with an fg knot uh, it's kind of an improved fg knot i need to do a video on it scorpion dc reel we're gonna get back to fishing y'all just want to check in after that first catch didn't uh, haven't spent much time on the water and we're already putting some in the boat so first one in the well we found this cool zone in the back y'all so we're thinking maybe just check out this rocky point here in the back um now we're in like six feet of water but you can see there's just nothing going on out here that was maybe a stump but almost everything all the way back in here has just been flat bottom moving right along she's gonna cast the chatterbait as i kind of roam the bank and just look for cover get me over there to those that grass yep. so she's working the bank a couple key points we see here here's some grass see normally this would be underwater you can tell the water's a couple feet down so it might normally be you know eight nine there ten feet back here and there she goes she's got the fish right off the grass i'm gonna get the net because we haven't seen it i don't know if it's heavy is it coming is it coming up what have we got oh ooh, you got him you can flip him you can flip him yeah nice one though right off of that grass that's like three pounder almost oh. <laughs> just creating a wall just don't want him to flop out of the boat right off that grass nice work she literally said take me right over that grass on the way out well, <laughs> now we've got a spot we may want to fish in the future funny as we work our way out of here it's something i just mentioned to her or to you guys this area would not seem too bassy a lot of people would probably just overlook it and you know when you're fishing a tournament every inch matters if it's a kayak tournament every ounce matters if it's a tournament on the boat so that was a uh, that was that was a nice fish i hadn't even fished this side but i knew that there was more stuff that i wanted to hit and i had a few confidence areas i was like we can knock it out i think we got it figured out shallow water and uh they're really keying in on that chatterbait i don't know if it's the flash of the blade the disturbance of the water because of it the shad color but we've also cranked a little bit and thrown some other baits right alongside the chatterbait and it hasn't gotten the same hits. And we've even missed a few on it. There we go. Oh, I had a bite. With all that being said, we've kind of got a pattern uh, figured out, at least we presume, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and tie on a second one. I got another half ouncer right here. I'm gonna put either a saucy swimmer or a white bandito bug if I can find more of those on the back. Got another go-to rod, same as what she is throwing. I think this is the gold series instead of the green, so it's got like cork and whatnot instead of that EVA foam. This is a Metanium DC with probably 15 pound fluoro, so. Oh, I missed him. Oh, he short struck it. I'm missing my pinchers. So here's the uh, trailer of choice. 3.3 inch white pearl shad saucy swimmer by Guggen Baits. Now we're both going to just have a, a swim bait here. These are the most expensive top dollar chatter baits out there. I would say a waste of money when you first get into fishing. Just buy the originals if you're going to do this right here. This is the jackhammer. With inflation these days, I'm pretty sure you'll find these for over 20 bucks at a lot of tackle shops. So again, I would just get the cheap stuff. We get store credit each month to uh, get new baits to showcase for y'all from Carl's Bait and Tackle. So they're one of the longtime sponsors of the channel. And so with that, uh, we get the opportunity to, you know, grab baits uh, for, uh, at a discounter for free. So, so that's why we use the jackhammers, because if you've got the opportunity, uh, you know, the color match blades in many cases, the uh, tungsten weighted head, which is a little bit more condensed, the uh, double hook keeper, the, I believe it's gamakatsu hook, but I'm probably forgetting there. Anyways, you get, a, you get a lot of beefed up artillery there with the jackhammer over the original, but those are definitely enough to get the job done and then some. If you're paying for this stuff out of pocket, I would just grab those for sure. With all that being said, I had to jump over to Carl's and check pricing for myself and they actually have the jackhammer for $12.79 if you're a club member. So uh, they're sponsoring today's video. I wanted to thank them for that and bring this to your attention. They just actually started their holiday sale and you can grab the jackhammers for $12.79. So uh, I would grab my favorite colors as white if you're looking for these things. Chatterbaits are firing off right now. The bass are hitting them. If you're not going white, green pumpkin for your clear water applications kind of represent more of that bluegill. And black and blue if you're fishing kind of late after dark and you just want that silhouette or if you've got some murky water. That's going to be my favorites right there. Kind of depends on the bait fish you're trying to imitate. But check this out. Uh, there's actually a few more discounts over at Carl's. So they've got different $1 baits right now at the moment, okay? So uh, every week these are going to change. I believe it's on Monday. So you've got a few more days maybe to capitalize on this first one that they're offering for $1. And get this. It's a spinner bait, literally one of the easiest baits to fish and is gonna catch you some of the biggest bass out there. So the Guggen Squad Zinger is $1 for the remainder of this week and you get a limit of five per customer. So I would just grab five because literally one of them normally costs more than that. And also they've got a special $5 bait that changes each week too. And the Baby Bullgill is this week's $5 bait. I've been throwing that more and more recently. Uh, we just missed a huge fish on this bait. Uh, subscribe if you wanna see it, it's coming soon. And uh, on top of that, they've actually got starting November 1st to November 20th, 
$10 off of $50 plus purchases, 15% off if you're buying over 100 bucks, and 20% off of $200 plus dollar purchases. So that's why Carl's Bait and Tackle has been one of our favorite shops. They've always got some of the best pricing. You're never going to find those jackhammers that cheap. I can promise you that among a lot of other of our favorite baits, okay? And they've got the brand new Guggen Squad reels. They've got uh, basically... They're our one-stop shop, and they can be yours too for the holiday season, y'all. So go ahead, head over to the link in the description and pinned comment. If you want to save a little bit of cash on some baits this holiday season, we're going to get you right back out there to Lake Worth. Um, there it is. Mm, no. Oh, gosh. Whoa. Whoa. You had a fish on there. Oh. Uh, he took you under the rock. You Holy smokes. Me. You had a good fish on there for a second. That felt heavy. It was definitely on a rock or tree, but that thing I think took you underneath something. Oh, I saw him come up and get it. Say, <laughs> like, that was funny. I saw my chatterbait. I saw him come up and grab it. Devin, again on the chatterbait, we saw a nice brush pile and I just saw a little ripple and I said, cast to that one. And she got kind of caught up in the branches, but then <laughs> you don't want to ruin a retrieve. So she popped it out and she just started working the bait right on back to the boat and she saw the fish eat it. It literally eight inches from the boat deck. I switched things up. So I'm throwing this tactical DD crank. It was like they're 75 or something. I think it's by S waiver. I'm just kind of working down low while she's covering the shallows. We're cruising around y'all on side scan, just checking out all the reeds. I didn't realize there was way more reeds on this side of the lake and that side looks much steeper. Over here, it's so shallow. You could work it with a kayak. I bet you'd kill it and tear it up on a frog every day of the week. But um, the other side has definitely got a steeper bank with the way it's set up. Rocky shoreline and there's docks. There's more opportunity over there for uh, us to switch it up. So we are going to uh, cruise around a little bit more. Just had to inspect this. Never fish this side of the lake. It looks like you can't get all the way to the dam. There's these buoys and I believe it's a do not enter zone. Um, I'm gonna take y'all over to the charts real quick because I think that is what it was saying. So it says stop restricted area from here to dam. And I mean, I, I guess that's just the buoys there. So I don't think you're allowed to hit half of the stuff that looks good on this lake, which is really crazy. We're just going to continue to roll with the chatterbait since that's been what's doing it. If we don't get hits pretty quickly, then I will, uh, one of us will probably switch up to another bait. I wonder what the biggest fish is they've witnessed somebody catch off of their front porch or whatever. Oh, got him. Yeah. There we go, fish number four. This is close to the spot I caught the uh, one out on top water in the tournament too. More chatterbait in the shallow rocky areas, y'all. I mean, there's some reeds mixed in, but we have not caught anything just straight up in the reeds today. We've flipped even more. And uh, it's probably been an hour past since the last bite because we've uh, worked that one main point on the lake, that cliff face essentially. Surprisingly, nothing off the cliff tonight. And boy, oh boy, that hook ain't playing, is it? That's fish number four. Look at all those fish under there. Look, they're just, that's the chatterbait. Oh my gosh. All right, I think we're gonna close out the evening in the reeds by the boat ramp, everybody. We got the frogs. We are working a few spots across from the ramp now. They weren't hitting in the reeds. We got one more rocky bank line. All right, y'all, 748. I think we're gonna call it. We got a last little bit of available light to load the boat up. Just like, there we go, see? <laughs> <laughs> what is, what there is, we go. What is the, let me see that pattern real quick. Got a good pattern. Look at all this right. big head, skinny body, definitely. Could use a couple more pounds on that guy. <laughs> all right, bye. All in all, successful day on Lake Worth, y'all. We got four out of five. We almost caught the bag in the uh, afternoon sesh. I think we gotta come back here and hit some more of this lake, man. I really wanna fish the northern end more. Uh, but but really we got a good idea of the layout of this place now so a lot of rocky shoreline a lot more reeds than I thought a lot of grass they were not in there today it would have been a lot of fun to get them on the frog but we had a blast out here Devin's first time fishing Lake Worth you might see this video and think all I need to throw is a chatterbait out here but trust me we just caught them on a day when that happened to be the bait of choice but uh, there's gonna be plenty of days where your Texas rig your drop shots gonna just destroy them the crankbait's gonna be number one so that's something to think about right so anyways y'all hope you enjoyed this video we're gonna go ahead and get this thing loaded up head back to our side of town and uh, we will catch y'all on the next one. Peace out.